Good morning. Good to see you all here today. I want to thank those who uh, helped uh, park this morning. Uh, we appreciate those that uh, helped out by driving the golf carts and giving directions. We appreciate that so much. Thank you all for being flexible. Um, and I'm grateful that our first run today was not raining or snowing. Amen. But just for your knowledge, uh, that end and this end will be open all the time for in and out. Or at this moment, the center doors we can still use. Uh, so be, uh, just be in prayer. Uh, God has helped us this far. He is uh, faithful. He will continue on. Um, is there anything I need to make mention of that's not in the bulletin? Anything at all? Anything at all? All right. If not, brother, if you'll please come. If you would stand with me as we have a responsive reading this morning, stand with me. Here we go. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This, this man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all through him might believe. He was not that light but was sent to bear witness of that light. That, that was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. Who was born? Out of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And we all say, Amen. 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 Let's sing together. <laughs> Unlap to my feet. 
invite you down the altar to join me here as we pray together, asking for God's blessings. So if you'll please join me here. Father, we thank you so much for this day that you have given us. It's truly the day you have made. And we desire to rejoice and be glad in it. We want to thank you for allowing us to be here. We thank you for what we have sung. We thank you for your truth, your word. We thank you for your plan of salvation. We thank you for your plan to transform us more each day into the likeness of our Savior. And Father, this morning... I pray that you would capture our attention. I pray, Lord, that your word would uh, not only enter into our minds, but it would plant seed into our hearts. God, I pray that you would bless us, not that we may hoard to ourselves, but that we may bless others. We thank you for this time and hearing this prayer. And we pray this prayer in the name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Let's sing this hymn together. Blessed assurance. Let's sing it out today. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine.
And I'd be so slow to anger, a little quicker to forgive. I'd never worry about tomorrow. I'd be more thankful for today. And I'd find joy among the sorrow 
and let it carry me away. If I was more like you, I would change the way I live. And I would be so slow to anger, a little quicker to forgive. I'd never worry about tomorrow. I'd be more thankful for today And I'd find joy among the sorrow And let it carry me away If I were less like me I'd find my strength in loving you I'd be as mighty as a river, as gentle as the morning dew. And I would walk into the fire, though my feet are made of clay. I'd find the path of God's desire and let it carry me away. And in times of desperation, when I'm weary and afraid, I would cling to my salvation and let it carry me away. Thank you so much. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask you to turn to the Old Testament, to uh, Deuteronomy. The Old Testament. Deuteronomy chapter 7 is what I'll be reading from. I want to share this morning about some groundwork for life. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 7, um, look at it, just one verse, you may want to keep your Bible open or read more of, the, more of chapter 7 today. I'm going to focus on just chapter 7, verse number 9. So if you please stand with me as we honor the Lord by the reading of His Word. This is what it says in, in verse number 9. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. Let's pray together. Lord, we are grateful today that uh, you are one that we can depend upon. Uh, we are grateful that you have seen us in our greatest need and you have provided a, a way of salvation through your son, the Lord Jesus. We thank you for the, the path that he uh, laid for us that as we understand that it is our sins that put Jesus on the cross 
so that we could be forgiven of our sins, he shed his precious blood. He was buried and resurrected. Now, Lord, you want us now as Christians, you want us to uh, walk with you. And Lord, I pray today you would help us to have that good foundation that as we walk, Lord, we may honor you with everything we say and everything that we do. Lord, I pray for myself that you would cleanse me of my sin, that you would think with my mind and speak with my mouth, for Father, I give them to you. May our hearts be receptive, and we thank you in advance for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You know, it is uh, extremely important that we have a good base on which to build and a good foundation because we know that uh, the winds of adversity are going to certainly blow, uh, the rains of difficulty will fall upon us, and the tsunami of hard times will begin to beat on us and almost roll us out of the way. And when these things happen, uh, we, will, we will fall. In uh, the New Testament, Jesus gave us a uh, story about uh, a couple of builders. And one of the builders uh, was uh, uh, wise and the other was unwise. Uh, the unwise built on sand and the wise built on the rock. When the wind and the rains beat against uh, the one who built on the sand, the Bible says that it was all washed away. But the, the one who built on the rock uh, had a good foundation, of course, and he stood strong. And my friends, I believe it is imperative for you and I, as we think about uh, our lives, that we have a good foundation because the winds and the rains and the tsunamis are going to come. We can't avoid those things. And Jesus made this statement. Uh, it's not too comforting, but he said it rains on the just and the unjust. So it's going to come to us. And when those storms do come against us, and uh, there's a question that begins to work its way up into our minds. And the question is simply this. Can God be trusted? That's a good question to ask ourselves. And uh, we, we can ask when the sun is shining. But can God be trusted when the winds begin to blow uh, against us? And I declare to you today that the one whose name we gather in today, he is one that we can certainly trust. No matter what comes our way, we can trust him. And this morning I want us to look at God's word. And as we look at God's word, it, it will give us, I guess, a, 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 it kind of orient us in the, in the right direction. I'm going to read uh, five different passages of scripture. And each one of these kind of build a, a testimony, if you will, of our awesome God and lays a, a good foundation for us as we live our lives this side of heaven. Now, uh, we know that we need a good foundation because our lives uh, are built upon that. It is our foundation for our family, our church, and also our country. We've got to have a good foundation. Now, the first passage I want to read to you is Exodus chapter 34. And listen to what God's word says. It says, And he passed in front of Moses, speaking about God, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. It tells us there that our Lord is abounding in love and also in faithfulness. And then in our text today, it says, Know therefore that the Lord your God, He is faith, the faithful God. That's who He is, keeping His covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love Him and keep His commandments. Also in Isaiah chapter 49, it says these words. This is what the Lord says. The Redeemer and the Holy One of Israel... To him who was despised and abhorred by the nation, to the servant of rulers, king will, kings will see you and rise up. Princes will see and bow down because the Lord who is faithful. And then in 1 Thessalonians in the New Testament it says these words, The one who calls you is faithful. And then in Hebrews chapter 10 it says these words, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. 
Now, these uh, words that I've read to you, God's word, they build a, a strong case, an airtight case about how God is faithful. But let me isolate just a, a few of these uh, phrases talking about our God. He is abounding in love and faithfulness. That's who our God is. It also says that he is the faithful God. The Lord is faithful, it says. And he who has promised is faithful. Now, of all these verses that I've read, there are uh, that many and, that, and, and so many more. But it reveals to us that our God is faithful. We can depend upon him. And one thing for sure is this. Our God has not changed. Amen? He has not changed. Uh, God is still God. And God can still be trusted. I read a, a testimony uh, about a man who was going through a horrendous trial in his family. A, a family storm, if you want to call it that. But there was a wayward child. And his child had, had, was sentenced to serve time. And this is what he said. He wrote these words, and I quote, God has been ever faithful to us and to her through this period of rebellion. Perhaps she will yet become like the prodigal in repenting. End quote. What this man was discovering was this, is that he was learning afresh and anew every single day that God was faithful even in the midst of a heartbreaking family crisis. God can be counted upon, and he is faithful. Now, I really believe with all my heart that every day that we live, every single day that as we live, God is challenging his children by asking the question, do you trust me? That's the question of the hour. Do we trust God? Can God be trusted? Can we depend upon him when the rug is jerked out from under our feet? Can God be trusted? And it seems like to me that in our world, every day, afresh and anew, there are revelations of chaos and moral confusion just bombarding us every day. And we ought to ask ourselves, if we really and truly do trust God. Now, it's one thing to trust God when the sun is shining and the bills are all paid, but it's another thing to, to trust God when the dark clouds of doubt settle all around us and the bill collectors are beating at the door. Do we trust God? Who or what do we trust in? And we live in an era of planned abstinence. And let me explain that. We bought a refrigerator about uh, a year ago, and I was heartbroken in many ways. <laughs> we had a refrigerator that we had before we moved here, probably two years. We've been here 12, so about 14 years old. And uh, I'm expecting that that refrigerator that we bought will last the same amount of time. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm counting on, right? And we get to Lowe's, and we're looking at all these refrigerators, and, and the, the salesman finally approached us, and he said, so uh, what do you have? I said, well, we have this, and it's the double doors. It's got the ice in the door and the water, all that, and uh, we want kind of the same thing. He goes, how long have you had it? And I told him the story I told you, about 12, 14 years. He goes, well, at best, everything we have lasts two or three years. I had to pick my mouth up off the ground. <laughs> How much does a refrigerator cost? A lot. It depends on what you get, but it, they cost a lot. And I thought to myself, why in the world? And what he's saying is, he's saying that they have built this to last just this long so you can throw it away and get another. That, that's the society in which we live in today. Now, when we buy a new car to us, we assume it'll last a year or two, but it may last a month. Right? We, we just don't know. Right? Also, when you think about that, it gets worse. We buy clothes. And our dryers, for some reason, shrink all of our clothes. Right? Within two years, we can't wear them. Right? <laughs> oh, me. I don't know. Right? That's, that happens. But also, it gets, gets even worse when you buy technology. Go buy a new computer. And by about, about the time you get home, get it out and plugged up, it's almost obsolete. Right? You, see, you know what I'm talking about? 
Uh, everything we buy, we know, is going to have to be replaced. And you add to all of that uh, 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 time of absolence, you add to all that the uncertainty of life, companies downsize. And the boss says simply something like this, let's talk about your future because it's not here. That happens. Also, our friends move away, marriages dissolve, children leave home, and our health is really something that doesn't last forever. Our, our friends may, our loved ones may pass away, and we live in that fear of hearing the C word, cancer. Or, or, or maybe a, a sudden death or, or stroke. We, we have that uh, looming in our, in our minds. And in this ceaseless world of change, my friends, I declare to you, God is the only unchangeable one. Everything else changes. God is constant. The scripture bears testimony that our God is faithful. Our God can be trusted. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, we, we know this passage very well. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. One translation says this, He'll get, make your pathway straight. That's the God whom we serve, and God's truth uh, doesn't just say that uh, a life of trust will be easy. It's not going to be easy. Jesus said this, in this world, that's where we live, in this world, it's, he says we will have trouble. We will have problems. They are going to come. But he says, be of good cheer. I have overcome this world. Now, as Moses said in a passage I read, it says that he is the faithful God. Our God is faithful. And what an important word for us today. He is faithful. And you may know the, the Marine Corps' uh, motto. You may know. I know Bob knows that. Semper Fi. We know that, right? We've heard that. You know what that means? Always faithful, always loyal. My friends, that describes our God. He is always faithful. Now, here's a question I want to ask you, but don't answer it too quick. How many people do you know who do exactly what they say they're going to do? Don't laugh too much. Just think about it. How many people do you know who do exactly what they say they're going to do? Now, let me rephrase the question again. How many people do you know who will do exactly what they say every single time? Don't answer yet. How many people do you know who do exactly what they say every single time and then do it in such a way and thoroughness and perfection that you never have to worry about it? Let me answer another question a little further. How many people do you know uh, who no matter what the circumstance, no matter how they feel, do exactly what they say every single time, and you never have to worry about it because you know if they say it, they will definitely do it without fail, without change, and without excuse. Do we know anybody who meets that last question's criteria here on earth? Most of us would say, well, I know some folks that are pretty reliable. I know some who... Uh, seem to do what they say, they, they try. We, we know they're somewhat reliable, and uh, we can sort of depend upon them. But even the best that we know, the best, prove not to be reliable. We've all experienced it. It's been said we live in an era or a world of uh, broken promises. Just, just watch the news. Leaders pledge peace, and secretly they're making plans for war. Marriages end over trivial things. And the elected wag their fingers in our face saying, I didn't, and we know good and well they did. The era of uh, broken promises. Hypocrisy seems to be a, a virus spreading to every nook and cranny of our culture. And in desperation, we cry out, uh, is there anybody that I can trust? Is there anybody I can rely upon? 
Anybody that is trustworthy that I can lean toward. And if we're looking in this world, the answer is no. All will fail us. But the Lord is faithful. Everybody else will let us down. But the Lord is faithful. He alone is faithful 100%, 100% of the time. He never changes. God is who he claims to be. In in God's record that I have read to us, that's who he is. In fact, this is what it says in, in Numbers 23. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? We know the answer to that. In John chapter 17, it says God is the true God. But Jesus said, and in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, it says God is faithful. And then in talking about temptation in chapter 10, verse 13 of 1 Corinthians, it says that, but God is faithful. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, he is faithful, it says. And then in 1 John chapter 5, it says God is him who is true. Our God can be trusted. He is the one who is faithful. And when we think about God's faithfulness, it's not some uh, little small characteristic, a secondary thing. That is his character. God is faithful and he does not change. If he was not faithful, he would cease to be God. When you look at the totality of God's word, my friends, all that God does rests upon his faithfulness. We think about who God is. Every blessing we receive is because He is faithful to His promises. And He never changes. If God were not faithful, we could not be saved. Amen? You would not be saved if God was not faithful. We, uh, why would we pray if God was not faithful? Why in the world would we, how would we have any kind of hope for the future if God was not faithful? We would, go, we, we would go down to death with fear because we think God's not faithful. But we know He is faithful. We can trust Him. We live in faith and we, we die precisely uh, knowing that God is faithful and we trust Him to finish what He started. So when you think about God's faithfulness, uh, uh, my hope and desire that we'll take these three things home with us. And the first of which is this. Every word He says is true. Amen? Every word. In the Bible, there are uh, several words that are translated to the word truth that we use. And one of the most important words is the Hebrew word emet, E-M-E-T. And that means stability, it means firmness, and it means certainty. That's what it means. Now, we get the English word for that, amen. That's, the same, that's where we get that, that word uh, from the Hebrew word emet. Every time, every time we say amen, what we are saying is this, that it is certain, yes, it's absolutely true, therefore, God is true. Amen. He is true. When we say God is true, what we're saying is God is faithful. Every word he says is true. And you think about God's faithfulness, it simply means that because he is truth, Everything he says and does is certain. Everything. That means that he is reliable 100% of the time. All the time. He never changes. I love what scholar, uh, the words from Lewis Chafer says this. He says of God, he says, God not only advances and confirms that which is true, but in faithfulness abides by his promises and executes every threat or warning he has made. God says what he means. He means what he says. And he does everything he says he will do. God does not fail. God does not forget. He does not falter. And he does not waver. That's who our God is. If he says it, he means it. And we can stake our lives upon it. Amen? We can stake our lives... Upon what we find in this word. It's true. 
Every word of it. And there are brothers and sisters across this globe, not in America, but across this globe, that are standing on God's word, and that's it. And they're losing their lives because they're standing on God's word. It is true. We can depend upon it. We can base our lives upon it. Everything we do, God said, every word he says is true. And so we know that it is true. So what should we do? We ought to read it. There ought to be some type of a plan we have that every day we're putting some of God's word in us. It's not enough to have a snack during Sunday school. It's not enough to have a snack on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday. Every day we ought to be pouring some part of, part of God's word in us. It's true. Every word of it is true. So we ought to be reading it, but also studying it, memorizing it, as we try to do at least one verse every month. Well, last month was the Lord's Prayer, but probably most of us knew it already. Is it too much to ask that we learn, memorize one verse a month? If it's true, every word of it? Is it if it's what we base our lives upon? Is it worth it to put that effort to read that verse three or four times a day? Is it, it's certainly worth it. We ought to memorize it. We ought to learn it and build our lives upon it. It's true, every word. And we ought to love God's word to the very point that his words flow through us just like the blood that flows through our veins. As we study it, memorize it, and read it, as we're living our lives out in this world, even when we begin talking anywhere, what will happen is God's principles will be coming out of our mouths. It's true. Every word of it. doesn't matter where we read it from, whether it's Genesis, Joshua, 2 Kings, Revelation, Ezra, Lamentations, 2 Corinthians, wherever we read in this book, it's true. It's true. The second thing is this, that every promise will be kept. Every promise. Because God is faithful... Every promise he makes is true. Have you ever uh, taken time uh, to trace down the, the promises of God found throughout Scripture? Have you ever done that? Uh, if you haven't, you ought to start. As you read the Bible every day and you kind of find a promise, what I do oftentimes, I, I use a digital Bible now, but uh, when I read that, I'll highlight it or underline it. I'll take a note of it, and I'll think when I'm reading that, I'll see that promise. I'll think, all right, who was this promise made to? Who's the audience of this? To whom was it given? But also, what were the conditions of that promise? How was it fulfilled? And how does it apply to me? If you haven't started doing that, start. As you read God's Word every day, underline that promise. And write those words down. Maybe write it out there to yourself and make it personal. And there are thousands of promises found throughout God's Word for every situation we'll ever face. You can find God's answer about salvation, about being forgiven of our sins, about prayer, about marriage, about forgiving others, about children, about disappointment, about insecurity. In fact, they have little books. I had them when I first started as a young Christian. They have books at the, even Walmart has them now, promises from God's word. Promises. And they even have it... Uh, they have uh, topics and it's all put in order for you. I know as a young Christian, I remember going to the Bible college, there were times that I had, I had stuff I just couldn't handle and I, I, I religiously used one of those books. Any topic I had, I could flip to the index, I could find that promise, I could go right into God's Word and I could read it. Now, how does that apply to me? They're easy. God's Word, it, it's easy to find those promised books but I would suggest rather just reading every day and underlining those promises as you come to them and then taking those notes. You know, when you think about it, 2 Corinthians says this, um, no matter how many promises God has made, listen to what it says, they are yes in Christ. No matter how many promises he made, they're yes in Christ. When we read a, a promise of God, we can truly say, Amen. God is reliable. He is stable. We can trust Him. If God said it, we can count on it. 
Listen to what Joshua uh, says in Joshua 21. It says, So the Lord gave Israel all the land he had sworn to their forefathers, and they took possession of it and settled there. The Lord gave them rest on every side, just as he had sworn to their forefathers. Not one of their enemies withstood them. The Lord handed all their enemies over to them. Not one of the Lord's God goods. Oh, not one of all the Lord's good promises to the house of Israel failed. Every one was fulfilled. Now, what a statement! What a statement! You read it through Joshua. You decide. You discover that God keeps His promises, but some of the promise took seven years. Right? Also, you think about how God keeps his promises through Joshua. It was not without a struggle. There were battles that he won. As you think about the promises of God keeping his promises, some were not without failure. Think about the sin of Achan. Also, think about how God keeps his promises. There were some loss of life. But God did what he said he was going to do every single time. That's the God whom we trust. I came across a, a name, Gladys Award. I don't know, I never heard of her before. But she was a missionary to China before World War II. And when the Japanese invaded uh, Yangqing, that's northern China, she could not leave her work behind. What she was doing, she was working with uh, orphans. She and one assistant set out to lead a hundred orphans to free China. And in the book of the hidden, place, uh, the hidden Price of Greatness, it tells what happened. It says, during that journey, Gladys, her name, uh, through that war-torn area, uh, Young Chang, she grappled with despair. She had sleepless nights trying to get these orphans, hundred orphans, and her one assistant to free China. And one morning, she woke up and she felt like she had no hope. You ever been there before? No hope. And one of the orphans, a 13-year-old young lady, uh, reminded her about Moses and the Red Sea, the story. The child explained the story that she had heard from Miss Gladys probably many times. And Gladys responded back, um, I'm not Moses. And the little girl said, no, you're not. But God is still God. God is still God. And he doesn't change. When they finally reached free China, God was still God. He can be trusted. I think it's a word for us today. And about all the uncertainty we face as we live our lives, uh, God is still God and we can trust him. No matter what mountains may loom before us, God is still God and we can trust Him. Do you ever feel squeezed by your circumstances? You ever have been there before? Maybe you're there this week. Well, I would suggest dwelling much, focusing upon the promises of God's Word. I would suggest reading those promises, writing them down. Put them where you see them in the morning, maybe on the mirror in the bathroom, maybe on your dashboard of your car, or maybe on your book as you go to school. Maybe put it on your phone so every time you open up your phone, you, you see that promise of God. Tell it to your friends and repeat them to yourself. And I would suggest even repeat those promises that God has given you back to Him when you pray. Stand on God's promises and don't let yourself be moved. Not only is every word of God true, every promise kept, because God is faithful, every trial has a purpose. Every trial. Nothing happens by chance with the children of God. I've observed that there are hard times that come our way, and we tend to think when those hard times come that God has abandoned us or forgotten us. We think, well, whatever's happening is a mistake. It's not what's supposed to happen. But my friends, uh, we think there's no purpose to it. And I, when you think about it, you know, I've seen uh, that as Christians, we can endure quite a bit, especially when we know there's a reason for it. Well, I want you to think about these truths from Scripture. Number one is God knows what you're going through. 
I want you to listen to what God's Word says. The, the Scripture reference addresses Job chapter 23, verse 10. It says, He knows the way that I take. He knows what you're going through. When He has tested me, I'll come forth as gold. God knows. Whatever storm it is, He knows. But also, the second truth I want to share with you is he knows, uh, uh, he uses my trials to help me grow. He does. Romans chapter 5 says these words, uh, verse 3 and 4, we also rejoice in our suffering. Oh, that's a trial, suffering, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character, and character produces hope. That's growth. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he's given us. But also he calls me to rejoice in my pain. James chapter 1, written to Christians that were scattered during the persecution. Scattered abroad, it says. He says these words uh, to those who are scattered. He says, consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. You may have heard the story before. But it's a great reminder. A little boy is flying his kite. Strong wind that day. He's flying his kite. And it pulled the kite up so high past the clouds. You see a string that's going up that way. And a passerby came by and said, son, what are you doing here? I'm flying a kite. The passerby said, well, I don't see a kite. He goes, I don't either. But I can feel the tug on the string. My friends, sometimes we may feel like God has disappeared. When we need him the most. We ought to take heart, take heart as his child. Just because we can't see him doesn't mean he's not there. Keep holding on to that rope. He is faithful even when we can't see him. Hang on and sooner or later you'll feel that tug. I came across this, I'm not sure where I saw it at, but it, it just caught my attention. And I think it's right right in concert with what God wants to say today to us. I wish I knew where I saw this first, but here was the word that I read. You've made it through every bad day thus far. You'll make it today. Why? Because God is faithful. Amen? He is faithful. He is faithful today that anyone who seeks him will find. That's what scripture says. How faithful is God? He is faithful. If we just seek, you will find. And you think about faith as well. It's a gift, but every gift has to be opened, right? Faith is a gift. It has to be opened. And as we exercise our faith, we'll begin to discover and rediscover that God is faithful. We can count on him. I think the record's clear. God is faithful. And we can count on him. Every word that we have is true. Every promise will be kept. And every trial has a purpose. Now here is, we know this is true. We can count on God. Here's where I want us to end today. Can he count on us? We know we can count on God. This book is full of that. It, it, it's true. Story and story and story, time and time again. God is faithful. We can count on him. He can be trusted. But can God trust us? Can he count on us? I suggest to you that he can he certainly can when we surrender to him. 
He can when we surrender all. In fact, we're going to sing that song in just a moment. But the record's clear, God. We can count on him. He is unchanging. He is flawlessly faithful. That's who he is. Now the question is, can he count on us? And he can if we'll surrender all. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you so much for today. We thank you that your word is true. We thank you that every promise you have made, you will keep. And we thank you that every trial we face, there is a purpose. And God, we know you're faithful. We know it. So, Lord, I pray you would teach us to trust when we can't see. Help us to hold that rope of faith till we feel that tug from heaven that tells us you're still there. God, we can count on you. We rejoice and we celebrate. And, God, I pray that we would be those people that meet in Bergen together that you can count on as well. God, I pray that you would help us this morning to have open ears and open hearts. And Father, that these words that we sing will not just be words from mouths, but they'll be from our hearts unto you. God, we thank you for hearing this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together and sing, I Surrender All.
thank you guys so much for being here this morning. I want to praise the Lord for his truth and how God never changes. And he's faithful. Amen.